Okay, Shauri, Nesa, Sneha, are you guys ready? Uh, yeah. Okay, yeah. I'm so, ready. So they're taking a small break, but uh, we'll go in uh, live in a minute and then get started. Um, if the judges are ready, I think, um, hey, can you have a question? No. Okay, yeah. Okay, if you're ready, so you can go ahead and get started. So we are live on Facebook. All right. Um, so first of all, uh, congratulations to everyone for making it here. So you're one of the top 100 spellers in uh, this competition. Uh, so we're live streaming this on Facebook. So if your friends, family, or anyone else wants to watch, they can watch it there. Uh, so the first speller is 004, and uh, you can unmute yourself, and then we can start. Okay, can you hear me fine? Yeah. All right. Okay, uh, your word is dolomite. Dolomite. Can I have the definition, please? Yeah. Uh, dolomite is a carbonate rock such as limestone or marble rich in magnesium carbonate. Dolomite, can I have the language of origin, please? Yeah, uh, dolomite is a French word, and it um, it comes from a French geologist's name. Dolomite, can I have the part of speech, please? Uh, it's a noun. Dolomite, can you use it in a sentence, please? Yeah, uh, Belgium is an important producer of several industrial minerals, including limestone and dolomite. Dolomite, are there any alternate pronunciations? It can be dolomite or dolomite. Dolomite. Can you repeat the word, please? Uh, the word is dolomite. 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 D O L O M I T E. E, dolomite. Correct. Good job. And next up is speller 006. Hi. Uh, Can you hear me? Yeah. And just make sure to bring your hands up. All right. Uh, your word has a homonym. So the word is Mornay. It's a noun and it means a cheese flavored cream sauce and it's from a French eponym. Mornay. M-O-R-N-A-Y, Mornay. Perfect, great job. Next up, Speller 16. Um, can you, 16, uh, can you just say something? Yeah, yeah, just, yeah, just whenever you get called up, just say something so we know you're there. All right, uh, your word is lassitude. Lassitude, can I have the definition? Yeah, uh, lassitude means a condition of weariness or debility, or it can mean fatigue. Um, lassitude, can I have the origin? Yeah, uh, lassitude is Middle French from Latin. Um, lassitude, are there any alternate pronunciations? Uh, it can be lassitude or lassitude. Lassitude. L-A-S-S-I-T-U-D-E. Lassitude. That is correct. Next up, speller 18. Hi. All right. Uh, your word is guide yang. Guide yang. Uh, may I have the definition, please? A guide yang is an enemy's ship with two or three masts and lofty triangular sails. Guide yang. Um, could I have the language of origin, please? Uh, it's from enemies. Um, uh, are there any alternate pronunciations? Uh, it's just the one, guide yang. Guide yang. G A Y D 
I A N G guiding. Amazing. That is correct. Next up, speller 24. Huh. Hi. All right. Uh, your word is Wapongo. Wapongo. Can I have all the information? Yeah. Uh, the word is Wapongo. It's a noun and it comes from Mexican Spanish. It's a fast and complicated Mexican couple dance that is usually performed on a wooden platform to accentuate the rhythmic beating of heels and toes. And uh, the sentence is the Cinco de Mayo was celebrated with all kinds of dances, including the Wapong the Wapongo. Wapong Wapongo. H U A P A N G O Wapongo. That is correct. You guys are killing it. Next up, speller at 33. Hi. All right, uh, your word is putrilage. Putrilage, may I have the definition please? Yeah, uh, putrilage is organic matter that is undergoing decomposition. Are there any alternate pronunciations? Uh, it's just the one, putrilage. Perfect. Can you use it in a sentence please? Yeah, uh, the insects were for a long time considered as the mere production of filth and putrilage. Putrilage. P U T R I L A G E. Putrilage. That is correct. And next up, the speller 49. Yeah. Uh, can you keep your hands up? Yeah. All right. Uh, your word is gazagene. Uh, gazagene. Um, all information. Uh, the only pronunciation is gazagene. It's a noun and it comes from French. Um, gazagene is an apparatus for impregnating a liquid with a gas, especially carbon dioxide. Mm -hmm. And uh, the sentence is the gazagene was attached to the vehicle during the travel. Uh, does this come from the uh, ISV root E meaning carbon or something like that? I don't know. Uh, I don't see that here, no. Okay, uh, G A Z O G E N E, Gazagene. Perfect, that is correct. And next up, speller 51. Hi. Hi. Um, All right, okay, uh, your word is Buzuki. Could you repeat that? Uh, the word is Buzuki. May I have the definition, please? A buzuki is a long-necked string musical instrument of Greek origin. What's the origin of the word? Uh, it's from New Greek. Could you use it in a sentence? Yeah. Uh, Alexandra's buzuki was ornately and beautifully decorated. Buzuki. B-O-U-Z-O-U-K- Hi, Buzuki. Good job, that is correct. And next up is speller 62. All right, uh, your word is fearnification. Can I please have all the information? Yeah, uh, the only pronunciation is fearnification. It's a noun. Uh, it comes from a German, middle, a German part and two Middle English parts. Uh, Fearnification is the process whereby snow is changed to the to a compacted granular snow that forms the surface part of the upper end of a glacier. And uh, the sense is Lucas used a hydrological model to calculate the fearnification and glacier flow. Fearnification. F I R N I F I C A T I O N. Fearnification. Perfect, great job. Next up, we have Speller 68. Hello. Hello. Yeah, sorry, I just need to find you on my screen. Perfect. All right, okay. Uh, your word is reconnoiter. 
Reconnoiter. Can and also, can you keep your hands up? Oh, yeah. Reconnoiter. Can I have all of the information? Yeah, so there's two pronunciations. It can be pronounced reconnoiter or reconnoiter. It's a verb and it comes from French. Uh, it means to make a preliminary survey or inspection of a region or a group in order, in order to gather information, especially for military purposes. And uh, the sense is the military officer try to reconnoiter potential helicopter landing zones to determine the level of enemy activity. Okay. Could you repeat the word one more time? Uh, the word is reconnoiter or reconnoiter. Reconnoiter. R-E-C-O-N-N-O-I-T-E-R. Reconnoiter. I believe that's correct. Did everyone else hear it correctly? Yeah. I, think. I, I, I saw it like it cut out on the last, like on some of the letters, it just cut out. I couldn't hear anything. Don't worry. I think I heard most. I, I think I heard that correctly. So no worries. Uh, maybe for the next round, try and see if you can get your mic to work better. But that is correct. And next up, we have Speller69. Hi. Um, all right. Okay. Uh, your word is bisagri. Uh, bisagri is this like a kind of cactus. Yeah. Uh, can I have a language of origin? Uh, it comes from Mexican Spanish. Uh, are there any alternate pronunciations? Uh, it can be bisagri or bisagre. Okay. Uh, can you repeat all the information? Uh, the word is bisagri or bisagre. It's a noun and it comes from Mexican Spanish. It's a small spiny cactus of Mexico and southwestern United States that is sometimes cut into slices and candied. And uh, the sense is Jessica often rewarded her son's help and chores with a slice of bisagri. Bisagri. B I S A G R E. Bisagri. That is correct. Thank you. And next we have speller 78. Hi. Hi. All right. Okay. Uh, your word is rhyolite. Can you repeat the word? Uh, the word is rhyolite. You know the language of origin? Yeah. Uh, rhyolite is. Yeah, it's German from Greek. Can I have all the information? Yeah, so the only pronunciation is rhyolite. It's a noun and it's German from Greek. It's a pale, fine-grained volcanic rock of granitic composition. And uh, the sense is Janet got permission from the park ranger to collect a sample of rhyolite. Rhyolite, R-H-Y-O-L. I T E Rylight. Perfect. Next up, we have Speller eighty seven. Hello. All right. All right. Uh, your word is Ocotillo. Uh, Ocotillo. Can I have the definition, please? Yeah. Uh, it's a spiny, woody shrub of arid regions of the southwestern U.S. and Mexico, having a tight cluster of red flowers at the tip of each branch. Ocotillo. What's the language of origin? Uh, it's from Mexican Spanish. Um, can you repeat the word? Yeah. Uh, the word is Ocotillo. Ocotillo? Okay. Ocotillo. O C. O T I L L O Ocotillo. That is correct. And next up, we have Speller 90. Hi. All right. Okay. Uh, your word is Realpolitik. Can I have all the information, please? Yeah. So the only pronunciation is Realpolitik. It's a noun and it comes from German. It means the government activities based on practical and material factors as distinguished from theoretical, ethical, or moralistic objectives. Uh, the sense is some political pundits 
pundits credited the rail rail politique for the increase in voter participation. Can you repeat the word, please? Yeah, uh, the word is rail politique. Rail politique. R e a l p o l i t i k. Rail politique. That is correct. Great job. Next up, we have Speller ninety one. Okay. Hello. Hi. All right. Uh, your word is zamburuk. Zamburuk. May I have the definition, please? Yeah, it's a small cannon mounted on a swivel, especially one fired from a rest on the back of a camel. Zamburuk. May I have the origin, please? Yeah, it's from Arabic. Okay, Zamburak, uh, can you, uh, can, is there any alternate pronunciations? Uh, it's just the one, Zamburak. Zamburak, Z-U-M-B-O-O-R-U-K, Zamburak. That is correct. Next up, we have Speller 105. Uh, hello. All right, uh, your word is, sorry. Okay, uh, your word is bicuculine. Bicuculine, can I have the definition please? Yeah, it's a convulsant alkaloid as obtained especially from plants and having the capacity to antagonize the action of acid in the central nervous system. Bicuculine, may I have the language of origin please? Yeah, uh, it's Middle English plus a new Latin part plus a Middle English part. Um, by Cucaline, um, are there any alternate pronunciations? Yeah, um, sorry, just, I'll, I'll pronounce the word again. So the word is by Cucaline or by Cucaline. Um, yeah, those are just the only two, by Cucaline and by Cucaline. I cook you. May, um, can you please use the word in a sentence? Yeah, uh, the bicuculine is used in laboratories across the world in the in vitro study of epilepsy. Um, can you please repeat the word? Uh, the word is bicuculine. Bicuculine. Well, does this have the ISB root in meaning chemical compound? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Well, by Can you please repeat the language of origin? Yeah, uh, it's Middle English plus New Latin plus another Middle English part. Um, you have you have thirty seconds remaining. Okay, by Cucaline. B I C U C U L I N E by Cucaline. I am sorry, but that is incorrect. The correct spelling is B I C U C U L L I N E. Um, excuse me, but I believe that is what I said. I heard one L. So did I. Um, I'm sorry, but I said two, but there's this point when you all like froze, so I think you didn't hear me. All right, please send over an appeal. Um, okay on the Zoom chat and we'll take care of it. Thank you. Uh, I mean, next up is spell for 113. Yeah, uh, just, to, just give me a second. All right, um, okay, so uh, 113. Oh, yeah, mm -hmm. uh, you need to, yeah, you need to unmute yourself. Uh, Srinidhi, you're muted. Having computer issues. Okay. Uh, can you keep your hands up? Okay. All right, 
Uh, your word is. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. I was having uh, issues with my computer. Okay. Uh, your word is renminbi. Renminbi. Can I have the definition, please? Yeah. Uh, renminbi is the currency of the People's Republic of China, the basic unit of which is the yuan. Renminbi. Can I have the language for origin, please? Uh, it's Chinese. Renminbi. Um, can I have the part of speech, please? Yeah, uh, it's a plural noun. Renminbi. Are there any alternate pronunciations? Uh, it's just the one. Renminbi. Renminbi. Uh, can you repeat the word, please? Yeah, the word is renminbi. Renminbi. R E N M I N B I. Renminbi. Great job. That is correct. And Thank the you. Next I'm color. sorry if I was having computer oh. issues. Of course, no worries. Uh, next speller is speller 116. Oh, uh, yeah. How? Oh. Uh, your word is fumarole. Fumarole. Uh, could I get the definition? Yeah, a uh, fumarole is a hole in a volcanic region and usually in lava from which, uh, from which it issues gases and vapors at a high temperature. Uh, can I have the language of origin? Uh, it's an Italian word. Fumarole. Uh, could, could you use it in, in a sentence? Uh, yeah, the volcanic gases and vapors are coming out through a large fumarole. Fumarole. Sorry. Uh, just, yeah, just listen to the end. It's fumarole. Fumarole. Yeah, okay. That sounds right. Fumarole. Uh, uh, could you repeat the word? Yeah, the word is fumarole. Fumarole. F U M E R O L E. Fumarole. Super close, but the oh, wait, next so one is. I think it, it's a variant. He's right. Ah, yeah. you're correct. <laughs> oh, thank you. Good Cool. Next up is spelling 140. Right. Oh, yeah. uh, your word is antinomasia. Uh, can you put the word again? Uh, the word is antinomasia. Can I have the definition? Yeah. Uh, it means the making of a common noun or verb from a pop from a proper name, such as the such as the word pasteurized from Louis Pasteur. Uh, can I have the origin? Yeah, it's a Latin word. Uh, can I have the part of speech? Uh, it's a noun. Do you need to say a sentence? Yeah. Um, baseball, which has a penchant for antinomasia, has dubbed players the Sultan of Swat, the Georgia Peach, and the Iron Horse. Um, I don't know what's pronunciations. Yeah. Uh, it can be antinomasia, antinomasia, antonomasia, or antonomasia. And it's Latin from Greek. Antonomasia. A N T O N O M A S I A. Antonomasia. That is correct. Next up, we have speller 142. Oh, yeah. um, all right. Uh, your word is cobalt or kobold. Kobold, can I have the definition, please? Yeah, um, it's a spirit that haunts houses or lives underground in caves or mines, and it's used in German mythology. Can I have the language of origin, please? Yeah, uh, it's a German word. Kobold. K-O-B-O-L-D. Kobold. Perfect. Next up, we have Speller 143. Hi. All right. 
one. Okay, uh, your word has a homonym, so um, I'll give you the definition and origin. Uh, your word is lidite. It's a noun. It com it means a high explosive composed chiefly of picric acid. Uh, may I have the language of origin? Yeah, it's from an English geographical name plus another English part. Are there any alternate pronunciations? Uh, it's just the one, lidite. Can you repeat the definition? Yeah, it means a high explosive composed chiefly of picric acid. Can you use the word in a sentence? Yeah. Um, the diver saw a shell packed with lidite explosives. Can you repeat the word one more time? Uh, the word is lidite. Can you repeat the language of origin? Uh, it's from an English geographical name plus another English part. Lidite. L-Y-D-D-I-E-E. -E. Lidite. That is correct. Uh, and next up, our speller is speller 150. Okay. All right. Uh, your word is caftan. Caftan. Can you give me the definition? Yeah. Uh, caftan is a usually cotton or silk ankle length garment with long sleeves that is worn chiefly in Eastern Mediterranean countries. Can you use it in a sentence? Yeah. Uh, the caftan is still worn throughout much of Morocco in both rural and urban areas. Can I get the language of origin? Uh, it's a Russian word. It's actually Russian from Turkish from Persian. Caftan. C-A-F-T-A-N. Caftan. That is correct. Next up, we have speller 161. Yes. All right. Uh, your word is conditori. Can I have all the information? Yeah. Uh, the only pronunciation is conditori. It's a noun, and it's German from French. It means a shop selling confectionaries or pastries. And uh, the sense is the conditori near the Berlin Museum was open only during the morning and the in the afternoon. Can you repeat the language of origin? Yeah, uh, it's German from French. And can you repeat the definition? Yeah, uh, it's a shop selling confectionaries or pastries. Can you repeat the pronunciation? Uh, the word is conditori. Conditori. K O N D I T O R E I. That is correct. Um, Thank you. Give me the question. Yes, go ahead. Uh, for the whole entire thing, I was having a lot of feedback and it's still going. Don't know why it does that. Can you can you hear the pronouncer and the judges fine when you get your word? I can hear you guys, but for one of the participants, it's like a, too much of echo, and it's like it's so frustrating for oh, us. Um, we can hear the participants, so as long as you can hear the pronouncer and the judges fine, we'll move forward. Cool, thank you. Uh, our last speller of the round is speller one sixty two. Hello. All right. Uh, your word is, uh, so your word has a homonym, uh, so I'll give you the information. So the word is buckle. It's a noun and it comes from Sanskrit and it means a tropical Asian evergreen tree with fra fragrant white flowers and orange to red fruit. Can I have all the information, please? Yeah, so the word is buckle. It's a noun and it comes from Sanskrit. It's a tropical Asian evergreen tree with fragrant white flowers and orange to red fruit. And uh, the sense is the stem barks, leaves, and fruits of the buckle tree are used to treat various ailments. Buckle. 
Are there any alternate pronunciations? It's just the one. Buckle. 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 Can you repeat the language of version? Yeah, it's a uh, Sanskrit. Buckle. Buckle. B O K U L. Buckle. I'm so sorry, one letter off. B A K U L. Buckle. Great job, everyone. And with that, we are at the end of round one. Hey, Sneha, uh, looks like there is an appeal, uh, Shraddha. So we will listen to that and then we'll get back to her. Shraddha, I, I got your appeal and then we'll listen and then come back to you. Can we keep our cameras off for now? What just happened? We are taking a little break between rounds to go over appeals. So you guys can take um, like a two minute break. And I've heard some, some audio feedback the whole beat, the whole entire round. I was hearing a lot of audio feedback. What do you guys think about this? I don't think there's much we can do. Uh, it's only a problem if you can't hear us fine. Um, you can lower your volume during the other participants. Well, it may be my computer. Okay. Uh, how long do we have a break do we have? I, maybe two minutes. Uh, yeah, we'll take another couple minutes and um, we'll call you guys when we're about to start. Okay, thank you. Go ahead and use the restroom, whatever you guys need to. Thank you. Oh. Um, okay, so we're not starting round two, but uh, for, um, I think, it's, yeah, for 105, um, we'll just give you a new word because the audio is kind of indecisive. So um, yeah, you can unmute yourself right now and then Thank you. We'll just go ahead with that. All right, so um, your word has a homonym. So the word is Xiphius. It's a noun and it comes from New Latin and it means a genus of large scomboid fishes comprising the common swordfish. And uh, the sense is some fish that are rich in omega fatty acids, such as the Xiphius, also may be high in mercury. Xiphius, may I have the language of origin, please? Yeah, uh, it's New Latin. Um, does this have the Latin word Xiphi meaning sword? Yeah, yes. Mm, thank and you. It's just, yeah, it's New Latin from Latin from Greek. Just more. Of the Latin noun ending us? Uh, I don't see that here, no. Thank you. Zipheus. S I P H I A S. Zipheus. That is correct. Great job. Thank you. All right. So, yeah, so that's the end of round one. And yeah, we'll just go ahead and start round two now. So, uh, the first speller is 004, so you can unmute yourself. Hi. All right. Okay. Uh, your word is mesaline. Can you repeat the word, please? The word is mesaline. Mesaline. Mesaline, can I have the language? Can I have the definition, please? Yeah. Uh, mesaline is a soft, lightweight lightweight and lustrous twilled silk fabric. Mesaline, can I have the language of origin, please? Yeah, uh, mesaline is French. Mesaline, can I have the part of speech, please? Uh, it's a noun. Mesaline, can you use it in a sentence, please? Yeah, uh, Nicole wore a burgundy mesaline dress for her cousin's wedding. Mesaline, are there any alternate pronunciations? Uh, it's just the one, mesaline. Mesaline. 
Can you repeat the word in the language of origin, please? Yeah, so the word is mesaline, and it's a French word. Mesaline. Mesaline. M E S S A L I N E. Mesaline. Off to a great start. That is correct. And our next speller is speller six. Us. Can you say something? Um, hi. Uh, okay, sorry. <laughs> All right, uh, your word is Racino. Um, also, make sure your hands are visible. Um, Racino? Yeah. May I have all the information, please? Yeah, so the word is Racino. It's a noun. It's made up of two Middle English parts and an Italian part. Uh, it means a racetrack at which slot machines and sometimes card and table games are available available for gamblers. And uh, the sense is Lawrence lost $1,000 at a Racino while vacationing in Las Vegas. Racino. Am I pronouncing that correctly? Racino? Yeah, it's Racino. Racino. R U. S S I N O Racino. Great try. The correct spelling is R A C I N O. Racino. Thank you. Yep, great job. Next up, we have speller 16. Hi. Hi. Right. Okay. Uh, your word has a homonym, so I'll give you the information. Uh, so the word is Macintosh. Uh, the word Macintosh is a noun, and it means a bright red apple with an aromatic and slightly tart flavor. Um, Macintosh, can I have all the information? Yeah, so the only pronunciation is Macintosh. It's a noun. It, it means a juicy, bright red eating apple with a thin skin, white flesh, and an aromatic, slightly tart flavor. And uh, the sense is, uh, or the origin, it's uh, named after a Canadian name. And uh, the sense is the Macintosh apple is another great apple that can be eaten raw, used in salads, or used in apple sauces. Um, Macintosh, am I pronouncing that right? Yeah, it sounds right. Um, can you say the word one more time? Uh, the word is Macintosh. Macintosh? M A C I N T O S H Macintosh. Great guess, but the correct spelling is M C I N T O S H. Great job. Our next speller is speller number 18. Hi. Hi. All right. Uh, your word is Tivoli. Tivoli? Yeah. Um, may I have the definition, please? Yeah, a Tivoli is a game resembling bagatelle and played played on a special oblong board or table. Tivoli? Uh, are there any alternate pronunciations? Uh, it's just the one, Tivoli. Tivoli? Yeah. Okay. Um, can I have the language of origin, please? Uh, it's from an Italian geographical name. Tivoli, uh, could you please use it in a sentence? Yeah, uh, Anna's board game collection includes chess, backgammon, and Tivoli. Tivoli? Um, Tivoli. Could I have the part of speech, please? Uh, it's a noun. Tivoli. Uh, T-I-V-O- L I Tivoli. Good job. That is correct. And our next speller is speller number 24. Hello. All right. Uh, your word is hygrodike. Hygrodike? Yeah. Can I have all the information? Yeah, so the only pronunciation is hygrodike. It's a noun and it's made up of two Greek parts. 
It's a device for measuring atmospheric humidity, um, having two thermometers and an, and an adjustable index showing the percentage of moisture in the atmosphere. And uh, the sense is Patrick installed a hygrodike in the living room to measure the room humidity. Does it come from Greek, meaning to show? Uh, yes. Hygrodike. H. Wait, can I restart? Yeah. Um, can you say the word again? Yeah, the word is hygrodike. Hygrodike? Yeah, hygrodike. Hygrodike. H Y G R O D E I K. Hygrodike. Great job, Cody. That's correct. Our next speller is speller number 33. Hi. All right. Uh, your word is chaussure. Can you repeat the word? Uh, the word is chaussure. Uh, the definition, please. Yeah, a uh, chaussure means any foot covering, such as a foot or a boot. Can you use it in a sentence? Yeah, uh, Amanda wore fancy red chaussure to the party. Can you repeat the word one more time? Uh, the word is show sewer. Show sewer. B H O I S S E U R. Show sewer. Great guess. Unfortunately, the correct spelling is C H A U S S U R E. Show sewer. Yeah. Great job. Our next speller is speller number 49. Yeah. Okay, uh, your word is vadal. Uh, wait, can you repeat the word? Uh, the word is vadal. Wait, vadal. Is this Hebrew? Uh, it's a German word. Okay, uh, give me all the information. Okay, uh, the word is Vedel or Weddel. It's a verb and it's a German word. It means to ski downhill by moving the rear of the skis from side to side, making a series, making a series of short, quick turns while following the fall line. And uh, the sense is Jennifer loves to, to Vedel the Rockies. Wait, it's a Vedel? Is it wait, wait, can you alternate pronunciations? It's Vedel or Weddle. Okay, it's, it's, I don't know, uh, W-E-D-E-L, Weddle. Good job, that is correct. Our next speller is speller number 51. Hi. Hi. All right, uh, your word is Dipnoas. Can you repeat that? Uh, the word is Dipnoas. Is it an adjective? Uh, yes, it is. Can you say the definition, please? Yeah, uh, dipnoous means having both lungs and gills for breathing. Could you use it in a sentence? Yeah, uh, a lungfish is the only type of fish with unique with a unique dipnoous respiratory system. What's the origin of the word? Uh, it's just a second. It's new Latin from Greek. Dipnoas. D I P N U O U S. Dipnoas. One letter off. Correct spelling is D I P N O O U S. Dipnoas. Next up is speller number 62. All right, uh, your word is kaleda. It's the pigtail worn, worn by a bullfighter. Can I please have all the information? Yeah, so the only pronunciation is kaleda. It's a noun and it comes from Spanish. It means the pigtail worn by a bullfighter. And uh, the sense is the bullfighter's kaleda was bobbing up and down during the bullfight. Kaleda, is that co the correct pronunciation? Uh, it sounds right. C 
A L A D A, Kaleida. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The audio broke up for me. Could someone else? Um, yeah, uh, it's incorrect. Uh, the the correct spelling is C O L E T A, Kaleida. Okay. Next up, we have speller number sixty-eight. Uh, could you say something, Susie? Uh, can you hear me? Okay. Yeah, I get it. Uh, can you keep your hands up? All right. Uh, your word is amylaceous. Amylaceous. Can you give me all of the information? Yeah. So the word is amylaceous. It's an adjective, and it means resembling or having the qualities of starch. Uh, the sentence is the sweet potato, yam, wheat, and rice are examples of amylaceous produce. And uh, the sense, I mean, the origin is late Latin plus Latin. Okay. Um, can you repeat the definition? Yeah, it means uh, resembling or having the qualities of starch. Uh, could you repeat the word? Uh, the word is amylaceous. Amylaceous. A M Y L A. That is correct. Our next speller is speller number 69. Hi. Hi. All right. Uh, your word is granifier. Granifier? Can I have all the information? Yeah. Uh, the word is granifier. It's a noun. Uh, it means a fine grained and a porphyritic igneous rock composed of feldspar and quartz. Um, the origin is ISV from German. And uh, the sense is the geologist surveyed the 10 foot thick bed strike composed of granifier, rhyolite, and basalt. Can I have all the information again? Yeah, uh, the word is granifier. It's a noun and it's ISV from German. It's a fine grained or porphyritic gran granitic rock um, with, an, my, with a micrographic intergrowth of the minerals. And uh, the sense is the geologist surveyed the 10 foot thick bed strike composed of granifier, rhyolite, and basalt. Granifier? Yeah. Granifier? Or? Uh, the word is granifier. Can you repeat all the information? Yeah, uh, the word is granifier. It's a noun and it's ISV from German. It's a fine grained or porphyritic granitic rock with the micrographic intergrowth of the minerals of the ground mass. And uh, the sense is the geologist surveyed the 10 foot thick bed strike composed of granifier, rhyolite, and basalt. The word is granifier. Granifier? G R A N. O-P-H-Y-R-E, Granifier. Perfect. Good Thank job. Thank you so much. Next up, we have speller number 70. Hey, Shauri, just one second. Um, uh, 33, we got your appeal. We'll look into it, okay? Hi. Okay, um, 78, okay. Uh, your word has a homonym. Uh, the the word is domain. It's a noun, and it comes from uh, Middle English, from French, and uh, it means legal possession of <laughs> legal possession of land as one's own, used chiefly in a phrase. Domain, D E M E S N E, domain. Perfect. Good job. Next up, we have speller number eighty-seven. All right. Um, yeah. All right. Uh, your word is apisthenar. Um, apisthenar. Can I have the definition, please? Yeah. Apisthenar means the back of the hand. Um, what's the language of origin? Uh, it's New Latin from Greek. Can I have the definition again? Yeah. Uh, it means the back of the hand. 
And can I have it in a sentence, please? Yeah. The palm and apisthenar are on opposite sides of the hand. Um, apisthenar. Can you say it one more time? Uh, the word is apisthenar. Say it again. Uh, the word is apisthenar. Apisthenar. Does this come from uh, Greek apistho, meaning back? Uh, he, he said yes to your question, if you didn't hear. Oh, okay. Um, apisthenar. Can you say it one more time? Yeah, the word is apisthenar. Apisthenar. O P I S T H O N A R Apistinar. Uh, I'm so sorry, that's incorrect. The correct spelling is O P I S T H E N A R Apistinar. Great Thank job. You. Next up, we have speller number 90. Hi. All right, uh, your word is logaedic. Can you repeat the word, please? Uh, the word is logaedic. Can I have all the information, please? Yeah, uh, the word is logaedic. It's an adjective. It comes from late Latin plus an English part. It means composed of dactyls and trochees or of anapes and iams, pr producing a movement somewhat suggestive of prose. Uh, the sentence is Chang wrote a lo logaedic poetry about peasants having a meter between song and common speech. I know once again the word is logaedic. Logaedic. Am I saying it correctly? Logaedic? That sounds right. And can you keep your hands up? Logaedic. L O G A. E D I C Super close. Uh, correct spelling L O G A O E D I C all the edic. Thank you. Yep, great job. Next up we have speller number ninety one. Hello. All right. Uh, your word is Kleinataxis. Kleinotaxis? Yeah. Kleinotaxis, may I have the definition, please? Yeah, a uh, Kleinotaxis means directional orientation involving turning towards a stimulus. Uh, may I have the origin, please? Yeah, a uh, Kleinotaxis is New Latin. Kleinotaxis, thank you. Uh, can I have uh, alternate pronunciations? Sorry. Yeah. Um, the only one is Kleinotaxis. Okay, Kle Kleinotaxis. Yeah, it's New Latin from Greek plus New Latin. Okay, Kleinotaxis. C L I N O T A X I S. Kleinotaxis. One letter off, Rishi. Uh, K L I N O T A X I S. Kleinotaxis. Thank you. Good job. Next up, we have Speller 105. Uh, hello. Yeah. All right. Uh, your word is cruet. Cruet. May I have the definition, please? Yeah. A uh, cruet is a small bottle for salt, pepper, oil, or vinegar for use at a dining table. Cruet. May I have the language of origin, please? Yeah. It's Middle English. Mm. Cruet. Does this have the Middle English masculine diminutive at? Um, hold on a moment. Uh, I couldn't hear you. Could you please repeat that? Uh, you're on the right track. Okay. Well, to it. Are there any alternate pronunciations? Uh, it's just the one. Crew it. Um, can you please just throw it in a sentence? Yeah. Uh, the, 
Mary bought a beautiful salt and pepper cruet set at the open market. Cruet. Can you please repeat the language of origin? Uh, it's Middle English. Cruet. Um, can you please repeat the definition? It's a small bottle for salt, pepper, oil, or vinegar for use at a dining table. Cruet. Um, and there are no alternate pronunciations? Uh, it's just the one. Cruet. C R E W E T. Cruet. That is correct. Thank you. Good job. Next up is speller number 113. Uh, All right. Okay, uh, your word is Su Chong. Su Chong. Can I have the definition, please? Yeah. Uh, it means any of several Chinese black teas made from large leaves. Su Chong. Uh, can I have language origin, please? Yeah, it's from Chinese. Su Chong. Can I have a part of speech, please? Uh, it's a noun. Su Chong. Um, are there any alternate pronunciations? Yeah, it can be pronounced Su Chong, Su Shong, and Su Jong. Si Chong, um, can you repeat the word, please? Yeah, the word is Su Chong. Su Chong, S O U C H O N G. Su Chong. Perfect. That is correct. Thank and you. And next up, thanks, good job. Next up, we have Smaller One Sixteen. Yeah. Okay, uh, your word is Madaka. Madaka. Could I get the definition? Please. Um, yeah, Madaka is a small Japanese freshwater piece of piece of fish. Madaka. Uh, can you give me all the information? Yeah, so the only pronunciation is Madaka. It's a noun, and it means a small Japanese freshwater piece of lead fish, and it's from Japanese, and uh, the sense is the Japanese rice fish, or madaka, is a model organism in genomic and experimental biology. Okay, so madaka, M-A-D-O-K-A, madaka. Good guess. The correct spelling is M-E-D-A-K-A, -A, Nadaka. Thanks. Good job. Next up, we have speller 140. All right. Um, okay. Uh, your word is opidoscope. Opidoscope. Can I have the um, origin? Yeah, it's a Greek word. Um, not the definition. Yeah, an opidoscope is an instrument consisting essentially of a tube across one end and used it for exhibiting upon a screen by rays reflected from the mirror vi vibratory motions caused by sounds. Uh, can I have, are there any alternate pronunciations? Uh, it's just the one, opidoscope. Um, opidoscope, can you use it in a sentence? Yeah, um, Am Amos Emerson Dolbear, an American physicist, contributed many notable inventions to the scientific world, including the opidoscope. Opidoscope. O P E I D O S C O P E. Perfect. Good job. Next up, we have speller number 142. Hi. All right, uh, your word is zistus. Zistus, can I have the language of origin, please? Yeah, uh, it's a Latin word. 
I have a part of speech, please? Existus uh, is a noun. Can I have the definition, please? Uh, Zistus is a long and open portico used especially by ancient Greeks or Romans for athletic exercises in wintry or stormy weather. Zistus. X, Y, S, T, U, S, Zistus. Perfect. That's correct. Next up, we have speller number 143. Hi. All right, uh, your word is orizivorous. May I have the definition? Uh, it means feeding on rice. May I have the language of origin? Yeah, uh, just a second. Uh, orizivorous is uh, new, yeah, it's new Latin plus Latin. Are there any alternate pronunciations? Uh, it's just the one, orizivorous. Orizivorous. O R Y Z I V O R O U S or Zivorous. That is correct. Next up, we have speller number 150. Hello. Hi. All right. Uh, your word is Delane. Delane. Can you use it in a sentence? Yeah. Um... Melanie wore a Delane fabric poncho for her class pictures. Can I get the definition? Yeah, Delane is a lightweight dress fabric of wool or wool and cotton made in prints or solid colors. Can I get the language of origin? Uh, it's a French word. Can I get the part of speech? Uh, Delane is a noun. Dolane, D O L A I N E, Dolane. I'm so sorry, that's incorrect. The correct spelling is D E L A I N E, Dolane. Great job. Next up, we have speller number 161. Yes. All right, uh, your word has a homonym, so I'll give you the information. Uh, the word is rescission. It's a noun and it means an act of annulling or canceling of a law, order, or, or agreement. Can you uh, give me all the information? Yeah, so the word is rescission or rescission. It's a noun and it comes from late Latin. It's an act of annulling or canceling of a law, order, or agreement. And uh, the sense is the plaintiff agreed to the rescission of the agreement. Can you repeat the definition? Yeah, it means an act of annulling or canceling a law, order, or agreement. And can you repeat all the pronunciations? Yeah, uh, it can be rescission or rescission. R E S C I S S I O N. Recession. That is correct. Good job. Next up, we have Speller. Oh, looks like that's it for the round, actually. You're done. Great job, guys. Yeah, so we'll just go ahead and get started with round three. So. Um, the first speller is 004, so you can unmute yourself. Hi. All right. Okay. Uh, okay, uh, your word is bamboola. Bamboola. Bamboola, can I have the definition, please? Yeah, um, a bamboola is a primitive drum used by inhabitants of Western Africa and the West Indies. Bamboola, can I have the language of origin, please? Uh, it's a French word. Bamboola, can I have the part of speech, please? Uh, it's a noun. 
bambula. Can you use it in a sentence, please? Yeah, uh, Gary demonstrated how to play the bambula drum to the students in his music class. And the bambula, is, are there any alternate pronunciations? It can be bambula or bambula. Bambula, can you repeat both pronunciations, please? Yeah, it can be bambula or bambula. And this is French? Yeah, it's French from Bantu. So. Bambula. Bambula. B A M B O U L A. Bambula. Perfect. That is correct. Good job. Next up, we have speller number 18. Hi. All right. Uh, your word is calcosideric. Calcosideric? Uh, could I have the definition, please? Yeah, uh, it means of or, of or belonging to the transitional period between the Bronze and Iron Ages. Calcosideric. Uh, does this come from the Greek root calc, meaning bronze? Uh, hold on, let me check up on that. Uh, you're on the right track. Okay. Um, could I have the language of origin, please? Yeah, so it's French and Latin from Greek plus Middle French plus, plus Middle English. Uh, does this come from the Greek root calc meaning lime? Uh, no, it doesn't. Okay. Could I have the definition again, please? It means of or belonging to the transitional period between the Bronze and Iron Ages. Uh, could I have the part of speech, please? Uh, it's an adjective. Okay. Calcosideric. Um, C... H A L C O S I D E R I C calcosideric. I'm so sorry, one letter off. The correct spelling is C H A L K O S I D E R I C calcosideric. Okay, thank you. Great job. Our next speller is speller number 24. Hi. All right, uh, your word is delul. Can you repeat the word? Uh, the word is delul. Delul? Yeah, I'll listen to the end. The word is delul. Delul? Yeah, there's a sound at the end. Sorry. The word is delul. Delul. Yeah. Um, can I have all the information? Yeah, uh, so the word is delul. It's a noun and it comes from French. It's a special breed of Arabian camels used for rapid traveling. And uh, the sense is Derek took the Sahara Desert tour by a delul caravan. And once again, the word is delul. Um, does it come from French da meaning of? Uh, no, it does not. The lul. Um, uh, you, your beginning is slightly off. It's just de lul. Du lul? No, it's de lul. De lul. Yeah. Um, can you repeat the definition again? Uh, it's a special breed of Arabian camels used for rapid traveling. De lul. I'm a singer, right? It sounds right. Are there any alternate pronunciations? Uh, it's just the one, Delul. Delul. Um, you have 30 seconds remaining. Delul. D-A-L-U-L-E, Delul. Ah, good guess. Correct spelling is D-E-L-O-U-L, Delul. Thank you. Good job. Next up, we have speller number 49. Yeah. Hey, Shari, just one second. Hey, the folks who are uh, misspelled in this round, please stay. 
uh, we don't know how the round is going to evolve, so we may need to bring you back. So stay on the line, please. All right. Um, for you, okay. Uh, your word is lise. Uh, can you give me all the information? Yeah, so the only pronunciation is lise. It's a noun and it comes from French. A uh, lycée is a French public secondary school that prepares students for university. And uh, the sense is Raphael studied in a reputed lycée before moving to the U.S. for his undergrad in Harvard University. Uh, alternate pronunciations? Uh, it's just the one pronunciation, lycée. Mm -hmm. uh, definition? Uh, lycée is a French public secondary, secondary school that prepares students for universities. Um, and you said this was French only? Yeah. Uh, part of speech. Okay, um, it's French from Middle French from Latin. Okay. I should say, my bad. Uh, and the part of speech? Uh, it's a noun. Okay, Lise. L I S E, Lise. I'm so sorry, that's incorrect. The correct spelling is L Y C E E. Oh, okay. Should I stay on still or? Yeah, uh -huh. just okay. wait till the end of the round. Yeah. Great job, though. And next up, we have speller number 68. Hello. Hi. All right, uh, your word is milgrain. Milgrain, can I have all of the information please? Yeah, so the word is milgrain. It's an adjective and it comes from French. Um, it means having the edge shaped into a fine beading and it's used of a gem setting. And uh, the sense is Judy wore a stunning diamond ring with the decorative pearl mill grain border. Could you repeat the word one more time? Uh, the word is mill grain. Mill grain. Uh, could you repeat the definition? Uh, it means having the edge shaped into a fine beading and it's used of a gem setting. Uh, could you say the language of origin? Uh, it's French. Milgrain. M I L L E G R A I N. Milgrain. That is correct. Good job. Uh, next up, we have speller number 59. Hi. All right. All right. Uh, your word is rabob. Rabob, can I have all the information? Yeah, uh, the word is rabob. It's a noun and it comes from Arabic. It's a musical instrument of Arab origin having one to three strings and played with the bow and now used in Indonesian gamelan orchestras. And uh, the sense is the rabob is a very difficult instrument to play and as performer carries high musical status within gamelan groups. Can you repeat all the information? Uh, the word is rabob. It's a noun. It comes from Arabic. It's a musical instrument of Arab origin, having one to three strings and played with the bow. And uh, the sense is the rabob is a very difficult instrument to play and as performer carries high musical status. Rabob. R E B A B. Rabob. That is correct. Good job. Thank you. Next up is speller number 78. Hi. Hi. All right, uh, your word is ahermatypic. Can you repeat the word? Uh, the word is ahermatypic. Can I have the definition? Uh, it means relating to corals that are not forming reefs. Does this come from the Greek root a meaning not? Yes. Now, um, can I have the language of origin? 
Um, it's Latin and Greek plus a Greek part plus an English part. Are there any alternate pronunciations? Uh, it's just the one. A hermetypic. A hermetypic. A H E R M A T Y P I C. A hermetypic. That is correct. Good job. Yeah. The ne- sorry. Yeah. The next speller is one o five. Hello. Hi. All right. Uh, your word is bonbon. Bon. Oh, wait, can you please repeat that? Uh, the word is bonbon. Bonbon. May I have the language of origin, please? Uh, it's a French word. Um, does this have the French feminine ending on? Uh, hold on. Um, I don't see that here, no. Uh, does this have the French masculine ending on? Um, I don't see that either. Mm. Bonbon. May I have the definition, please? Yeah, a bonbon is a large globular bottle, specifically a hollow vessel with two or three necks used in washing or absorbing gases. Um, bonbon. Um, are there any alternate pronunciations? Uh, it's just the one. Bonbon. Bon bon. Um, may I have the word used in a sentence, please? Yeah. Uh, the bomb bon is used in the condensation of acids on a large scale production. Bon bon. Um, can you please repeat the language of origin? Yeah. Um, it's, it's French. Yeah, it's just French. Bon bon. And there are no alternate pronunciations? No, it's just bomb bon. Bomb bon. bon. Uh, can you please repeat the definition one more time? It's a large globular bottle, specifically a hollow vessel with two or three necks used in washing or absorbing gases. Bomb bon. B o m b o n n e. Bomb bon. That is correct. Good job. Next up, we have 113. Hello. Hi. All right. Uh, your word has a near homonym, so I'll give you the information. Uh, the word is gallery. It's a noun, and it means a long porch or portico or a veranda. Gallery. Can I have the language of origin, please? Yeah, uh, it's American French from French. The word is gallery. Gallery? Uh, There's not that middle sound. It's just gallery. Holy cow. Gallery. Are there any alternate pronunciations? It's just the one. Gallery. Gallery. Can you repeat the word, please? Yeah, the word is gallery. Gallery. Uh, holy cow. Uh, G A L. L R I E. So close. One letter. Oh, cow. Only one L. G A L E R I E. Great job. Next up, we have speller number 140, if I'm correct. Yeah. All right. Uh, your word is traje. Traje, what's the definition? Yeah, a uh, traje is um, an act of, co- of an act of crossing or traversing a uh, passage, course, route, or way. Traje, um, what's the origin? Uh, it's French from Latin. 
Um, are there any alternate pronunciations? Uh, it's just the one, Traje. Okay, um, Traje. Um, can you repeat the origin again? Uh, it's French from Latin. Um, and can you repeat the definition again? Yeah, um, it's an act of crossing or traversing a passage, course, route, or way. Traje, T-R-A-J-E-T, Traje. Perfect, that is correct. Next up, we have Speller 142. Hi. Hi. All right, uh, your word is machinio. Machinio, can I have the um, language of origin, please? Yeah, um, it's Italian. Machinio. Can I have the definition, please? Yeah, um, actually it's Italian from Latin, but yeah. Uh, the definition is a sedimentary deposit consisting largely of sandstone and is especially common in the Alpine region of Europe. Machinio, are there any alternate pronunciations? Uh, it's just the one. Machinio. Machinio. M A C C I N I O. Machinio. Good guess, Charlotte. The correct spelling is M A C I G N O. Okay, thank you. Good try. Next up is speller number 143. Hi. Uh, can you bring your hands up? Yeah, all right. Uh, so your word has a homonym, so I'll give you the information. Uh, so your word is racy. It's a noun and it's French, and it means a brief novel, usually with a simple narrative line. Um, are there any alternate pronunciations? Uh, it's just the one. Ray C. Can you repeat the definition? Yeah, it's a brief novel, usually with a simple narrative line. Uh, can you repeat the language of origin? Uh, just a second. Uh, it's French from Middle French. Can you use the word in a sentence? Yeah. Benjamin is planning to write a racy about his childhood experiences in the form of numerous collections of essays. Racy, R-E-C-I-T, racy. Good job, that is correct. Uh, next up, we have our last speller of the round, speller 161. Yes. All right. Uh, yeah, hands up. Okay. Uh, your word is atotism. Can you repeat the word? Uh, the word is atotism. Can I have all the information? Yeah, so the only pronunciation is atotism. It's a noun and it comes from French. It's a form of socialism that advocates utilizing the power of the state to equalize income and opportunity. Uh, the sense is the leading theorists of atotism were fervent supporters of belligerent nationalism. Can you repeat the definition? The definition? Yeah, the definition. Okay. Uh, it's a form of socialism that advocates utilizing the power of the state to equalize income and opportunity. Can you just repeat the pronunciation? Uh, the word is atotism. Atotism. E-T-A-T-I-S-M. That is correct. Good job. And with that, we are done with round three. Great job, guys. And so how many people are left? Think eight. Let me just oh, count. Okay. Uh, thanks. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. so yeah. Since there are yeah. more than four spellers, so the, the the spellers who misspelled in this round, they may uh, leave the Zoom call now. Okay. Congrats. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Bye. Good job, guys.
Thank you. All right. Um, I think we'll just go ahead and start round four. Um, so the first speller is uh, zero, zero, 004, so you can unmute Hi. yourself. All right. Okay. Uh, your word is Agilon. Agilon. Can you repeat the word, please? Uh, the word is Agilon. Agilon. Can I have the definition, please? Yeah. Um, an Agilon is the pungent seed-like fruit of an annual Indian herb that is used especially as a seasoning and for its medicinal properties. Agilon. Can I have the language of origin, please? Uh, it's of unknown origin. Agilon. Can I have the part of speech, please? Uh, it's a noun. It's pronounced Agilon. Agilon? Yeah, that sounds better. Agilon. Uh, can you use it in a sentence, please? Um, yeah, it's Maya added fenugreek, Agilon, and curry leaves to the lentil dish. Agilon. Agilon. Uh, Agilon? Yeah, listen to the middle part. It's Agilon. Or Agilon. Ag yeah, uh, it's Agilon. Agilon. Are there any alternate pronunciations? Uh, it's just the one. Agilon. Agilon. Yeah. Agilon. Can you repeat the definition, please? Yeah, it's the pungent seed-like fruit of an annual Indian herb that is used especially as a seasoning and for its medicinal properties. Agilon. A-J-A-W-A-N. Agilon? One letter off. A-J-O-W-A-N. Agilon. Thank you. Next up is speller number 68. Hello. All right. Okay, uh, your word is MFI. Yeah, so the it can be pronounced MFI or MFI. It's a noun and it's from Zulu. It's an African it's an African sorghum plant that yields a sweet juice. And the sense is the Imfi plant is cultivated throughout Africa chiefly for the sweet juice of the cane. Okay. okay. Uh, could you repeat the word one more time? Uh, the word is Imfi or Imfi. Okay. Imfi? Yeah, that sounds right. Okay. Uh, could you repeat the origin? Uh, it's from Zulu. I'm so sorry, that is incorrect. The correct spelling is I M P H E E M P. Thank you. Great job. Uh, our next speller is speller number 69. Hi. <clears throat> All right, uh, your word can be confused with a similar word, so I'll give you the information. Uh, so the word is humedi. It's an adjective. It's from Middle French, and it means cooped at the extremities, and it's used in heraldry. Can you repeat the word? Uh, the word is humedi. Humedi? Am I saying it correctly? Yeah, yeah. humedi. Uh, are there any alternate pronunciations? It's just the one, humedi. Uh, can I have it in a sentence? Yeah. Um... Carol's family designed the new coat of arms with a sable cross humedi and five argent escallops. Can I have a language of origin? Yeah, um, it's Middle French. Can you repeat all the information? Yeah, so the only pronunciation is humedi. It's an adjective and it comes from Middle French. It means cooped at the extremities and it's used in heraldry. And uh, the sentence is, Carol's family designed the new coat of arms with a sable cross humedi and five argent scallops. Yeah. Humedi. H-U-M-E-T-I-S. Humedi. 
Good guess, Ryan. The correct spelling is H U M E T T Y. Great job, then. Next up. Oh, Next up. One second. So, the, again, uh, similar to last round, uh, people who, spellers who misspelled, so please stay on the line uh, for the, uh, until the end of this round. Next up is Speller 78, Bona. Hi. Um, okay, uh, your word is dam. Okay, uh, your word is damn It's a noun and it's from Arabic. Can you repeat the word? Uh, the word is damn Uh Can I evolve the information? Yeah, so the word is damon. It's a noun and it's from Arabic. It's an African hyrax that lives on rocky outcrops and cliffs and feeds mainly on grass. And uh, the sentence is Robert spotted a damon at the campsite. Can you repeat the language of origin? Yeah, um, sorry. Uh, it's from Arabic. Dam and D A M A N Damon. That is correct. Good job. Next up is speller number one oh five. Hello. All right. All right. Uh, your word is cyanocranial. Cyanocranial. Um, may I have the definition, please? Yeah, uh, it means having a rod-like slender bone in the skull of most lizards. I know, cranial. Does this have the Greek root cyan meaning blue? Uh, no, it does not. Okay. Um, cyan or cranial. May I have the language of origin, please? Yeah, um, just give me a second. Uh, yeah, so it's a new Latin plus medieval Latin, medieval Latin plus a medieval English part. Cyanoc oh, wait, can you please repeat the word? Yeah, the word is cyanocranial. Cyanocranial. Can you please use the word in a sentence? Uh, the students are learning about the cyanocranial lizards in the biology class. Cyanocranial. Is that the Greek root cranium meaning skull? Uh, you're on the right track. Is the Latin root O meaning relating to? Hello? Could you say that one more time? This is what the Latin root O meaning relating to? Uh, did you hear me? I said uh, yes for the O. Okay, thank you. Cyanocranium. S I O N O C R A N I A L. Cyanocranial. Super close, one letter off. C I O N O C R A N I A L. Cyanocranial. Thank you. Great job. Great job. Next up is Speller 140. All right, uh, your word is balam. Balam? Yeah. Okay, um, can I have the origin? Yeah, uh, it's Malayalam. Uh, can I have the definition? Yeah, um, a balam is a canoe of the Malabar coast. Um, are there any alternate pronunciations? It's just the one, balam. Okay, can I have the part of speech? It's a noun. Um, can you repeat the word again? The word is balam. Balam. B A L L A M. Balam. Perfect. Good job. Next up is speller 143. Hi. Hi. All right. Uh, your word is tremi. May I have the definition? 
Yeah, the word tremi means a large metal hopper and pipe used to distribute freshly mixed concrete over an underwater site. May I have the language of origin? Uh, it's a French word. Are there are there any alternate pronunciations? Uh, it's just the one tremi, and it's French from Latin. Can you repeat the definition? Yeah, uh, it's a large metal hopper and pipe used to distribute freshly mixed concrete over an underwater site. Can you use the word in a sentence? Yeah, the construction workers used a tremi to prevent the water diluting the concrete. Can you repeat the definition one more time? Yeah, it's a tremi is a large metal hopper and pipe used to distribute freshly mixed concrete over an underwater site. Tremi. T-R-E-M-I-S, Tremi. I'm so sorry, the correct spelling is T-R-E-M-I-E, -E. Tremi. Great job. Next up is our last speller of the round, speller 161. Uh, your word is Mechlin. Can you repeat? Uh, the word is Mechlin. Can I have all the information? Yeah. Uh, so the only pronunciation is Mechlin. It's a noun and it comes from a Belgian geographical name. Uh, it means a delicate bobbin lace that is used for dresses and millinery and has floral designs against the net ground of hexagonal uh, mesh. And uh, the sentence is, Michelle has, yeah, sorry, just, okay. Uh, Michelle has a Mechlin oriental rug with star motifs in her formal living room. Can you repeat the, can you repeat the pronunciation? Yeah, the word is Mechlin. Can I have a definition? Yeah, it's a delicate bobbin lace that is used for dresses and millinery and has floral designs against the net ground of hexagonal mesh. Mechlin. M E C A L A N. Ah, so close, Ken. Uh, M E C H L I N. Oh, okay. Thank you. Great guess. Good job. And with that, we're done with round four. So, yeah. Um, so, spellers 078 and 140. So, you guys are done for today. So, you'll be moving on to the grand finals. But um, for the other six, yeah, the other six spellers, um, we'll do a tiebreaker and I will take either the top two, probably. So, um, so when, think, when is the tiebreaker? Uh, right now. Like, oh. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, so, yeah, I think we'll just go ahead and start that. So, um, just give me a sec. Okay, so um, the first speller is 004, so you can unmute yourself. Hi. Hi. All right, uh, your word is palicar. Palicar? Yeah. Can I have the definition, please? Yeah, a palicar is a Greek soldier in the War of Independence against Turkey. Palicar, can I have the etymology, please? Yeah, it's from New Greek. Palakar, um, can I have the part of speech, please? It's a noun. Palakar, can you use it in a sentence, please? Yeah, uh, Sasha held out her hand to greet the old Palakar. Palakar? Uh, the word is Palakar. Palakar? Yeah, Palakar. Palakar. Can I have, um, are there any alternate pronunciations? It's just the one, Palakar. Palakar? Yeah. Am I saying it right? Yeah. Palakar. P A 
L O C A R Palakar. One letter off. Uh, the correct spelling is P A L I C A R or K A R Palakar. Great Thank job. You. Next up is speller uh, sixty. Sixty. And, uh, can you bring your hands up? All right. Uh, your word is mama T. Mama T. Can I have all of the information? Please? Yeah. So the word is mama T. It's a noun. It's from uh, Tamil. And it's a hand tool used for digging and cultivating in Southeastern Asia. And the sentence is, uh, Deja used a mama T to dig out the soil for planting the green bean seeds. Could you repeat the word one more time? Uh, the word is mama T. Okay. Could you repeat the definition? Yeah, it's a hand tool used for digging and cultivating in Southeastern Asia. Okay. Mama T. M A M O T I. Mama T. So close, one letter off. M A M O T Y. Okay. Great job. Next up, we have Spelder 69. Hi. Hi. All right. Uh, your word is colobium. Colobium. Can I have all the information? Yeah. So the only pronunciation is colobium. It's a noun and it's from late Latin. Uh, it means. A sleeveless or shortly short sleeved tunic used as an ecclesiastical vestment or a similar garment worn as a coronation robe, and uh, the sense is the king wore the king wore a colobium at his coronation. Uh, can I have language of origin again? Yeah, um, it's late Latin from late Greek from Greek. Uh, does it come from like col or com meaning with in Latin? Uh, I don't see that here. Colobium. Can I have all the information again? Yeah, so the only pronunciation is colobium. It's a noun. It's a sleeveless or short-sleeved tunic used as an ecclesiastical vestment or a similar garment worn as a coronation robe. It's late Latin from late Greek from Greek. And um, the sense is the king wore a, colo a colobium at his coronation. Colobium. Uh, can you repeat all the information one more time? Yeah, the only pronunciation is colobium. It's a noun. It's from late Latin, from late Greek, from Greek. It's a sleeveless or short sleeve tunic used as an ecclesiastical vestment, and the king wore a colobium at his coronation. Colobium. Um, there are thirty seconds remaining. Colobium. E O L O B I U M colobium. That is correct. Thank you. <laughs> Great job. Next up, we have speller one hundred five. Hello. Okay. Um, your word is bacosine. Uh, Bacosine. May I have the definition, please? Yeah, uh, so it means um, any of several game birds that are widely distributed in the new and old worlds, especially in marshy areas. Um, Bacosine. May I have the language of origin, please? Yeah, uh, it's a French word. Bacosine. Are there any alternate pronunciations? It's just the one. Bacosine. Big question. Can you please use the word in a sentence? Yeah. Um, Jerry spotted a big question eating seeds by the wet meadow. Big question. B E C A S S I N E. Big question. That is correct. Great job. Next up, we have speller 143. Hi. All right. Uh, your word is Coriol. May I have the definition? 
yeah, the word Coryall means a a Guiana native dugout canoe. We have the language of origin. Uh, it's from American Spanish. Uh, may I have the part of speech? Uh, it's a noun. Are there any alternate pronunciations? Uh, it's just the one, Coryall. Can you use the word in a sentence? Yeah. Um, in the summer, Coryall rental is available by the lake. I just have all the information. Yeah, the only pronunciation is Coryall. It's a noun and it's from American Spanish. It's a Guiana native dugout canoe. And in the summer, uh, Coryall rentals are available by the lake. Coryall, C-O-R-I-O-L, Coryall. So close, C-O-R-I-A-L, Coryall. Great job. Next up, we have Speller 161. Okay, uh, your word is mamaluco. Can you repeat the word? Uh, the word is mamaluco. Can I have all the information? Yeah, so the only pronunciation is mamaluco. It's a noun and it's from Portuguese. It's a Brazilian person of mixed racial heritage, especially the offspring of a white man and an American Indian woman. Uh, the sense is the first Mameluco appointed this to the Supreme Court was applauded and cheered and cheered by the crowd. Can you repeat the pronunciation? Yeah, the word is Mameluco. Mameluco? Can, yeah. can I have the definition? Uh, it's a Brazilian person of mixed racial heritage, uh, especially the offspring of a white man and an American Indian woman. Mamaluco. M A M A L U C O. One letter. One letter off. M A M E L U C O Mameluco. Oh, okay. Great try. Great try. Good job. So yeah, so I think so that's the end of this group. So um, the spellers qualifying from the tiebreaker are uh zero seven uh sorry, zero six nine and one zero five. So the four spellers are zero six nine, zero seven eight, one oh five and one forty. Uh, so you guys will be going to the grand finals. Um, and yeah, so congratulations to everyone on this is probably this was a pretty hard work set. So good job on that. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Congratulations, everybody. You guys are gonna kill it. Thank you. Bye. See you guys tomorrow. Bye. Bye.